Hello, my name is Roger Rock, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you some installation tips on our rail to end post kit. The rail to end post kit is used for attaching a rail in between two posts. And in the, each kit, you'll receive a pair of mill finish springs and a pair of springs which have a little bit of red paint on them. Uh, one's a pair of mill finish springs go at one end of the rail. One spring will go into the post as we have here and the other spring will be attached inside the hole on the end of the rail and the same is true on the other end. You'll have your red springs in the post and in the rail on uh, this end of the rail. Now to install this the instructions are on the kit but I wanted to do this video to just to help clarify things a little bit and stress certain points that I think are probably a little bit more important than others, something you can't really convey on instructions. In each case, you're going to drill a hole with a, with a one inch paddle bit, one inch deep, and attach the spring to the base of the hole That's in both posts and both ends of the rail. But in these particular holes, it's a, it, this, with this kit, it's a little more important that you get the holes very close to the same depth. So to do that, I'll take my one inch paddle bit, hook my tape on the end, and with a felt tip pen, I'll make a mark on my bit, one inch down, and then I'll take a, a, a piece of blue tape and, and put it right on that mark with a little flap on it here so that when I drill my hole in my post and in my rail, that flap starts uh, cleaning the, the sawdust off the face of the post and I know I'm at the right depth. Now, after I've drilled my holes in the posts and in the rail, then I'll screw my spring to the base of the hole. And when you do that, you want, you want to be uh, careful to get the tails of the springs at 12 o'clock high. Uh, don't have to be exact, exact, but you know, the closer you get them, the better. And you want to get it at 12 o'clock high for all four springs in, in both posts and in both ends of the rail. After you've accomplished that, I suggest you put it together dry, insert a guide pin in both ends, get your mill finish spring to your mill finish spring and you hook it on your guide pin, you push one post or the other apart and just twist it together dry, one turn to make sure that everything's tightening up at the same time. Uh, sometimes when you'll do this, you might tighten it up and, and one end's tightening up a little bit quicker than the other one is. Uh, if you give it a one and a half turns, that'll probably cure that problem. But if it turns out that you're just not happy with that, that this one, say, let's say you're, you twist this together and this one's touching the post and this one's an eighth of an inch away. Well, if you're not comfortable with that, you can take it apart, back one of the springs out, take your paddle bit and drill it maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch deeper, just a little bit deeper, and then attach the spring back to the base of the hole and put it back together, dry again. This joint really does not require any, any epoxy. So it, it, it really can just stay dry. If you, if you feel comfortable putting some epoxy on it to complete your joint, you, you can certainly do that. But now I got both of these tightening up even. I've adjusted my springs already and I've got them where they're, where they're in sequence. And, and that's really all there is to it. Uh, now I've been asked, can I put another one right across from it? Now this is a three inch post and, and it's a one inch hole and a one inch hole and you can put them right across from each other. Very unlikely that those screws are going to absolutely intersect uh, perfectly with each other. If you want to uh, exercise a little more caution, you could drill this hole up an eighth of an inch higher or a quarter of an inch higher and, this, and then do the same on the rail. You would just adjust your template. Maybe on your wafer cut, you'd have come down uh, an, an inch and then come down an, an inch and a quarter and then make those two holes and when you're doing the rail on this post you can take the higher hole and use the higher hole here for your joints and then when you come on this side and drill use the lower hole and the lower hole and just stagger them just slightly and that'll offset your screws just slightly that's with your three inch post if you get out to a, a three and a half inch or four inch post or bigger you're not going to have to worry about that at all and then 
like I said, you can you can put a little epoxy on here if you like or not. Once you put your balusters in, you can twist the rail like this, either before the post epoxy on the post is set or after. You can do this the next day if you like after the epoxy is set on the post. And you can twist the, the uh, rail, put your balusters in, and swing them in and down. Uh, if you're going to use shoes, you can do it with shoes. Put your shoes on, swing it in, and put them up in, swing it down. And install your ba balusters after the posts are set if you like. And right down at that point, that rail can't twist because the balusters are in there uh, preventing it from doing that. Now, if you want to come off here at, uh, at 90 degrees, same thing, you can just come down the same distance. The screws are not going not to uh, intersect with each other. You can do them at the same height and, and go off either direction here. So that's really the only uh, points on the uh, rail to end post kit is getting those, uh, getting your springs tails at 12 o'clock high and spring depth consistent and just kind of take a look at it when you're twisting it together and if, and if one's tightening up before the other you can back out any one of the springs of course you're going to do it on the side that's got the the uh, if this side's got a, a sixteenth of an inch gap and this guy this has no gap when you when they start coming together and you want them to come together exact then you can just back one spring out drill it a sixteenth of an inch deeper re-screw re the spring to the base of the hole and they'll they'll come together at exactly the same time might make you feel a little better. It does, isn't absolutely necessary because by the time you get that turn and a half on there, there's going to be plenty of pull on there. But I even like to see them both come together at the same time. Uh, other than that, uh, just always with any spring bolt, make sure before you put it together that you take a uh, pliers and firmly grab a hold and give it some some moderate uh, twist down there. Make sure, make very sure that the spring is attached firmly to the base of the hole. You don't want to have uh, the kit uh, during installation have the springs twist on you. And that's true with all the spring bolt kits. And on the post to deck kit, when you're twisting that together, you want to do the same, when you're installing that, you want to do the same thing. Install your spring, get a hold of it with pliers, make sure it's in there good. And in this case, you're going to fill it halfway filled with epoxy, halfway filled with epoxy. Insert your pin. And with this kit, you don't want to put more than three turns on it after it comes in contact with the deck. Like right now, that post has just come in contact with the deck. I give it two. I, you can give it three, but there's like a turn and a half. And that's really all you need. Those springs are pulling that post down to the deck tight enough just to hold it in place until that epoxy sets. This, on your post kit, it's not about tight, giving it a lot of twists. Just two, three, three twists at the most, and you're going to get the job done with that. So there's your uh, tips for your rail to end post kit, a few little pointers on the, on the post kit. And uh, if you have any questions, as I say in my other videos, please uh, just give me a call. Roger Rock. I'm at 561-951-3334. I'll always help you pretty much seven days a week, and I'll help you any way I can. Thank you. Bye.